Welcome back, friends. Changing chords cleanly is often one of the biggest hurdles for beginning guitar players, and intermediate players often still get tripped up by tricky changes. Today, I'm gonna to break down the three steps you need to take to master changing chords cleanly. If you're new to the channel, subscribe for more guitar skills, songs, and fun. Let's get into it. Before I break down step one, I want to invite you to join my seven day guitar intensive course. It's my gift to you. I want to see you playing songs. I want to see you making music and I want to do everything I can to make that happen. I've got a link in the description that'll take you there. It's totally free for you. My gift for you working on your strumming. All right, let's talk step one. Now this is gonna seem really simple. Maybe you're gonna roll your eyes at me, but first we need to make sure we really know the chords. A lot of times I have students come in and they're struggling to play a four chord progression, for example, and it turns out two of the chords are still a little tricky for them to play. So I wanna show you the exercise I use to learn chords to this day. We're gonna use a simple grab and release. So what I'm gonna do, let's say I'm learning a G chord, um, I'm doing this one that uses all four fingers for this example. So I've got pinky on third fret of the first string, ring finger third fret of the second, middle finger third fret of the sixth, and my index finger is on second fret of the fifth string. Standard G major chord. Now what I would do if I'm learning this is I would grab it, I would strum it to make sure it sounds good. If I got some, you know, weird, I could listen and go, okay, I'm not doing that quite right. So that's why I'm always grabbing then strumming. Once I do that, I'm gonna let go of the chord. Now, not just lifting my fingers up a little bit, I'm moving my hand away from the neck. And I'm gonna imagine what finger goes where. I'm gonna imagine my pinky and my ring finger, my middle and my index, and I'm gonna set them back down. I'm grabbing the chord again, I'm gonna strum it, and I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna do that over and over again, 10 times, 20 times, something like that, as I'm learning these chords. Step two is use anchor fingers to master transitions between chords. So I'm gonna do a G chord to a D chord. And I'm gonna explain how this anchor finger thing works. When I play this G chord, especially this four finger G chord, my ring finger is on third fret of the second string. When I play this D chord, my third finger is also on the third fret of the second string. That is an anchor finger. It's a finger that does not need to lift up when I'm changing between different chords. So what I want to do is I want to strum that G chord. I want to visualize keeping that third finger down. Then I want to keep the third finger down while I lift my other fingers. I want to visualize where my fingers go for that D chord. Then I want to set down my fingers for that D chord and then strum it. Once I can do that pretty comfortably, I'm going to put on a metronome, say 60 beats per minute, and on beat one, one, two, three, four, I'll change. One, two, three, four, change. One, two. And I can slowly start speeding up that metronome from 60 to 68 to 76 to 84. I like going in groups of eight, that's just me. Um, until I can do this chord change as quickly as I need to. Let's talk about step three, target fingers. Sometimes we don't have the same note in the next chord we're going to. For example, if I'm going from G to C, so what I do instead is I use a target finger. One of my fingers from the C chord is gonna be the first finger I set down when I play C. In this case, I'm gonna use my index. So I'm gonna play my G chord, I'm gonna strum it. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna visualize my first finger, where does it go for the C chord? I'm gonna let go of the G chord and I'm gonna put my first finger down. I'm gonna visualize where my other fingers go for the C chord and then I'm gonna set them down and I'm gonna play the C chord. And I can pick another target finger to use going back to G. Maybe I'll use my first finger again. And I keep going and I do this in a loop. And again, as I get comfortable, I'm gonna bring the metronome into it and I'm gonna start practicing speeding up that chord change. Now here's another really cool thing you can do with a target finger. I can switch which finger I'm targeting. So if I was using my first finger, and I'm still struggling a little bit, my other fingers are going down kind of slow as I get to the C chord, maybe I start targeting my ring finger to help build some muscle memory and dexterity in that finger. 
So I would play my G chord, imagine where that ring finger goes, lift up, set it down, then fill in my C chord. And again, maybe I'm gonna use my pinky to target as I go to G, imagining where it goes, filling it in, playing the G chord. And that's how I use anchor fingers for chords that don't share any common notes. The awesome thing about learning to change chords is it's a cumulative effort. Every time you learn a new chord and your fingers are making a new motion, your brain and your hand are connecting more and more deeply. And that means every time you go to learn a new chord and a new chord change, it's gonna to come to you more quickly because of all the chord changes you've learned before. So don't be afraid to go ultra slow in the beginning, making sure you really know in your mind where your fingers are gonna go and that you get them there without any tension in either your right or left hand. Remember, if you want more help with strumming, I wanna give you access to my seven day strumming intensive course. There's a link in the description. And always remember, it's called playing guitar, not working guitar. So go have some fun. Now, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video. Give it a watch and let me know if it gives you some help.